So hello everyone and we're going to give some commentary to the Crazy House Elite Arena. So we're watching uh, FM Chicken Crossroad who's got who's won the first three games playing Freebie, also known as Retard on Fix. And already, well, in this game, White's doing quite nicely. And Black resigns. So we'll stick with Chicken Crossroad for a while and uh, watch a few of his games. As uh, yeah, Retard says, that was a slip, Knight e7. F7 square is weak. Okay, so hopefully the sound's working okay. Um, looks, like, looks like everything should be fine. So Chicken is now against React Native, just going for simple at h3 attack. And uh, seems like he has quite a pleasant position where He could have picked up a pawn directly, but it's going directly for the attack. Ooh. Very uh, greedy playing f6 rather than at f6 there. He didn't have a pawn in hand, okay. Okay, so chicken takes on g2. He's going to be getting to work on the light squares. So the king takes back. White is actually short of material. Um, he really wanted a bishop on c4, but there's no, there's no, no, no piece supporting it. Black's got quite a lot in hand. Um, Chicken gone to a think here, though. Uh, before playing at h3. It's going to back off, I, I imagine, to a dark square. Blocks. So you just simply want to rook at h1. That's going to get taken. Queen takes knight. And rook at h1 takes. It's only a pawn. Takes. Ooh, is there a queen takes queen? Rook h1, knight here. The king can't go back. So the other knight? Rook. Ooh, is there a mate here or not? That king, that, that's... He stays safe though. That was just a pointless check. And he flags React Native as well. Uh, so good win. And just to look at the, let's see how things are going overall. Um, so you can see I'm streaming on 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 Lee Chess here. Uh, we have Chicken Chicken Crossroad keeping his lead, and he's up against the finisher. 
So just to begin beginning of this game. It's a delayed Scandi. Rather dubious opening. Playing a A6. Oh, hi there, Albert Bihar, uh, Bihar in the Twitch chat. So, quite tense what's happening here. Because white is making some inroads on the dark squares, but black maybe has. Black is trying to get in. That's dark light. That's light square. So a couple of pawns, for example. If, if uh, just going for, if this takes takes pawn here check. If king here, you have pawn here check, king here, pawn here check, king here. So it's not. It is slightly dangerous. So it's worth defending. But now you defend. Yeah, there aren't any knight checks. Oh yeah, there's, there's this knight check. Maybe picking up the queen even. And queen here would be lethal, I think. The queen out there would probably be lethal. So he defends, but knight takes bishop. Okay, going for this. What's the idea? Yes, interesting. Bringing this queen in. Queen here, an idea, but he could just block. But then you can go queen takes pawn, so that's a really nice idea. Queen here and then takes the pawn. Does the chicken going to find that? And then takes the pawn with the queen and blocks and then pawn here check he finds it he finds it so that's the escape square that's the only escape square for the king uh, but white resigns because because um, queen takes knight will come so pawn here check if block pawn here check king here queen takes knight he could block again but you've got another pawn uh, taking there to get a queen if necessary for mate if you try and run again then um, then, then what? Um, then, wah. So just to show the end of that game. So it was a force mate at the end. If king f1, queen takes f3. If blocks, I was thinking pawn at g2. Yeah, pawn at g2, run. And what if he, instead of blocking, he just keeps running? If he keeps running, knight at g2 is checkmate. Okay. So that was the, the move I was not seeing. The, the knight's covering this escape square. So simply knight at g2. And of course, if you block, then uh, things are a little easier. You get a, even a... You get here, some kind of block. And then knight at g2. Um, okay. Uh, let's get back to the live action, uh, which is Chicken at the moment, storming off to a lead. Uh, the finisher in second, PKNM in third, and Bugzilla just getting back his streak, having lost the first game. Albert says, can I go over the London system? Um, hmm. I don't really usually... Okay, I can go over the ideas of openings rather than like lines because I play the London system but I don't think of it in terms of oh my goodness this game just went by um, I, I kind of want to see this game so I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna um, so we'll we'll see a London system at some point and then I'll discuss um, this is the bugzilla game this just happened right now okay hmm. so you this is a destruction. Uh, the queen covering off this escape square. This escape square. Yeah, so it'll definitely come up, um, and then I'll I'll discuss it. Let's see. Uh, okay, so this is a London system. So chicken crossroad is black against PKNM. PKNM uh, plays London system. Katask plays the London system. So maybe one way of learning is just look at games of people who play it. Okay, so if I just going back to the beginning again, challenging this is a good idea. If 
White ever puts his bishop on g5, trying to pin your knight. Challenge that and chase it away. If necessary, chase it all the way all the way away. If he puts it here, put your bishop in front of it. That's the idea. The reason is because try and defend this bishop with a knight so that if the bishop takes, you don't get double pawns here. You don't mind double pawns here, here on the d file, but you don't want double pawns on the f file. So this is okay. D pawns actually controls e4, so it's pretty good. Again, g3 is okay. Okay, so this is a nice interesting idea. You always have this idea of sacking a piece for a pawn and putting a pawn back and winning that piece. And we see that in this game. Uh, but why still staying solid by putting a pawn back on g2? Important, important to do that. Because um, otherwise f3 would be a weakness, h3 would be a weakness. So at g2 is a really important move there from white. Now, uh, notice also this file is open. At the, in the opening, not so much now when there was a bishop on c4. There is, a, there is um, ideas of winning a pawn here and then using that pawn to attack the king side. So the idea in the London system is you try and win some pieces on the queen side and then take over to the king side and, uh, and attack with those pieces. So white's got some pieces in hand already, so we can focus our attention just to the king sides. So white, uh, black is going for a bishop or pawn at e2. Pawn at e2 would be much better, but he's only got a bishop, so he uses the bishop. White wants to get in on h6 or f6 and doesn't really have any kind of toehold into the position just yet. So he's taking here. Well, he could have taken the queen, but I guess um, he wants this and then takes the rook. And now notice uh, white's got a real back rank, rank weakness. So chicken crossroad, I think... Although he just went for the rook, he went for a couple of rooks. If you can get pawns, pawns are going to be very dangerous, because pawns on the, on the second rank are going to be lethal. So he's going for back rank ideas. So if they get a pawn here, for example, he just, he's going to sack for a pawn. It's like anything for a pawn. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to sack, but I'm just saying there are ideas. Okay, he does sack. You see, because pawn here is actually a mate threat. Rook takes bishop is a mate threat, because the knight is pinned. So that's that's uh, he's cleared off the back rank. and Okay, pawn here is coming. Oh, okay. He put a rook down first, and black ran out. What? Uh, white ran out of time. Okay. But pawn at h2 was also coming. I think he put a rook down there just to waste up one of white's pieces. So that's that's um, so that uh, so that white didn't have any sort of queen takes g2 and a couple of knights using the knight and bishop to come to Santa. There was no danger of this because the rook was actually covering h4, h4, h3. So. We learned lots of things from London system. We, we saw lots of patterns there, just a brief rundown. But we'll see. I'll describe it in the games as we go along. Interesting, interesting. So Bugzilla against Chicken. I, I now I, I can't say so as much about openings in e4, e5, but um, I was a little bit surprised by this move. So I, I guess it's thinking about the sacrifice here and this sort of ideas, uh, or even just going knight here now. Um, uh, Crazy Home says, almost missed this. Nice match. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what actually happened? Um, he he went for the sack. Okay, he went for the sack, and then the knight. So notice how the knight is attacking a light square, and the pawn is attacking a dark square. This is a, the way you kind of use pieces in combination. Um, so he... Um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to do that, but it's just often um, the combination of the light and the dark square attacks is very powerful. So notice that the knight has no escape on, along this diagonal because the queen covers, but the knight can always come to e4. Ooh, interesting, interesting. So he really wants at, f, at f7 or at h7. If either pawn takes, you just drop the pawn and... Uh, this trouble, right? I mean, at h7, rook takes pawn, promote, block, and you're winning a rook. Okay, he goes this way instead. Hey, this was actually quite a good solution. Rook takes pawn, takes, takes, takes. So that was a quite, quite a good, quite a good solution from Bugzilla. Um, like, uh, white didn't get exactly what he wanted, as it were. I mean, the black king's quite open, but he's just trying to pick up the knight. Um. It's hard to hold on if if queen there, bishop here, for example. There's, and there's no checks. You have to check. Are there any checks? Because checks come with tempo. No checks at all. Queen there, you just hit with tempo, developing a piece, and hit it again. So this knight's hard to control. So he uh, Bugzilla just sacks the queen. 
Notice f2 is going to, is obviously going to be some kind of point of entry. This is the only piece black has in white's half of the board, so that's where his ideas are. Uh, but in the meantime, what does white have? Just just a pawn and a queen to attack. But even just dumping a pawn on f6, and that's what um, chicken does, seems like a decent thing to do. f3, okay, creates a weakness on... Whenever you go c3, it creates a weakness on c2, but that's not really an issue in this position. So he's just, just working away on these dark squares, and I think it's going to be enough. Um, in fact, by the flags, it's just too, comp too hard to defend, especially a 1 plus 1. So okay, it's been a good choice to follow chicken. I think um, I think we we see lots of nice crazy house ideas, especially if people are new to crazy house. They want to see how the idea of working on a single color into a position. That's a very uh, nice idea, and the idea of using pieces attacking different colors. I think this is interesting. Um, oh, we get a rematch. <laughs> we get a rematch as black. Um, and this is number one against number six, because Bugzilla kind of got stalled his very first game he lost. Um, was it against Chicken, even? So he hasn't been able to get his campaign going. So Chicken's kind of running him down. Two beasts head-to-head. -head. Now, okay. This is a dangerous, because Bishop takes pawn check. Uh, if king yeah, if king ever goes here, pawn here, and there's surely going to be some mate. So you'd have to go here. It's just extremely risky. So I think he has to defend f7, um, which is frustrating because obviously then this pawn sort of falls. Um, like this pawn, you could just take it. Um, you don't want to take the knight, maybe, because always bishop takes knight, pawn takes, you get a knight g2. There might be some ideas. This way around. Um, let's go a message. Crazy Home says he can't play the Elite. Yeah, I can't play the Elite either. Um, I, I haven't been looking after my Crazy House rating. Um, it's a shame. I mean, I should be 2100, but uh, I'm not currently. Okay, there was always Knight F3 check with uh, a Royal Fork. So he defends that very nicely. Yeah, so I'm... I'm okay, let's just quickly run back from the beginning again. So what is happening here? I mean... Both sides attacking quite hard. Like the black king is very exposed. Notice the bishop hasn't even developed yet. So this black king is is really in trouble. But but white only has a pawn and a knight to defend with. I mean this is very aggressive. Um, I mean just knight g five. You might even have to sack the queen, or you just go here. It's just it's very uncertain. Even just knight g five looked good. But white just plays a slower move. Just develops. Knight h three. He just simply wants to take the rook. So the bishop at f1 was just to defend that pawn. Oh, knight here is excellent, because it's also a defensive move, defending g5. Okay, black can simply block with the bishop or a pawn. He goes with the pawn, just more solid. Knight at g5. Okay, takes. That's what that knight's there for on h3. Takes. And now white, uh, black's just won a piece, so this is wonderful for black. This, okay, that's solid. The bishop's a wonderful defender. Notice that's defending the pawn on d6. He backs off. Ooh, oh, 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 this is a good attack from white. Is there anything in it? Bishop's again a great defender because it stops the queen running down. Well, no, the queen was defending that anyway, but gosh, this is just a time scramble, two seconds on the clock. I don't think chicken will flag, though. He is, he's a fast player. Um, hang on, what happened there? That was a good one. He chased that queen around and ended up winning a piece. That was a, that was a smart move. He chases it. Oh! Did he miss? No, he didn't quite miss mate. There were there are sneaky ideas with knight at f3. So he sacks the queen, but where's the check? Oh, just wins a whole queen? What? Well, that's careless. So you've got to just play in one second a move, but okay, he found the, uh, the hook mate. The knight defending a, a major is a hook mate because the knight stops the king running a, run, running this way. As long as that knight's defended. The pawn cuts off that square and the knight cuts off this square. So it's a very nice pattern. You just need a rook and a knight and a defended knight uh, and it's a nice hook mate. But, uh, ooh, that was a tough game. So now we get the two, two big guns again, uh, chicken against the finisher. And uh, we might get a London system, but we don't. The finisher is now playing e4. Okay. Um, and Chicken is playing again a very aggressive... I mean, firstly, playing a6, which is uh, 
it's very passive. But then going for this very aggressive pawn sack line, uh, just trying to develop his bishop fast. Um, I mean, this? No, it doesn't work. The, the bishop and the queen control this square. Um, but this should be good for white, I'm thinking. Just normal moves, normal moves. Okay, he's just doing that, so he can get his king safe. Ah, so is there some trap? He could have takes, takes, he could have just take, takes, takes, and there's always a bishop here, check, and then you pick up the queen. So why didn't he do that? He must have been thinking there was some trap. Knight takes knight, queen takes, bishop here, check. Huh, I don't know why he didn't just take that knight. He definitely must have seen something I didn't, though, but because... It was a very, it's a very classic trap, the discovery and then you take. You get it often in standard chess in the French defence. Um, yeah, so the key in this sort of position as white, by the way, is you have to cover the pawn checks and you have to cover the knight checks. So this is why these are the kind of four squares you want to make sure are safe. And obviously it's much easier to do if the king is further back because... It's nearer your pieces. Um, so this, I mean, this is a kind of slow move. But, uh, and this is actually not a slow move at all. It's threatening pawn takes bishop and queen takes pawn. So this is sort of thinking, this is thinking just very, in very basic terms of if I could play several moves at once, uh, what's the threat? But, so he's trying to, black is trying to create a weakness on g2 and uh, white is going straight for the jugular on f7. Uh, so you can see obviously the f7 threat is much more serious. Having said that, you never know, this might bear fruit, <laughs> and you see it here. Ooh, but this f7, I don't know. If you take on f7, that's going to be a discovered check. The problem is black hasn't moved his c8 bishop, and that's going to be a trouble. And we see it in Bughouse often a lot. If you don't move the c8 bishop, the king can't go, sorry, f8 bishop. King can't go to f8, so ah, this is, this is just going to be painful. So he takes, he's going to take back with a, again a knight, and check. Well, he goes, goes for the queen. That's a surprise. So what's he thinking? Rook here as a follow-up. King here. Queen. Uh, check with the knight. If he comes here, queen here is checkmate. If he comes here, hmm. The king wants to run here, here. So knight here, maybe. Yes, yeah. knight here. Oh, yeah, the bishop's covering off. Okay, so sorry, I just got it completely wrong. The bishop's cutting off d6. Rook. What? What happened that game? <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back to the the arena. So what's happening in the arena? Chicken crossroads on 36 to finish it. Um, Chicken crossroad basically yeah gave up the ghost in that um, game against the finisher. He, the, the 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 threats were too strong. Um, F takes g8 equals queen. He's threatening a rook here checkmate. Uh, and uh, was it a resignation or timeout? It was timeout looking for a solution. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's get back to the action, because uh, I think it's been quite fun following Chicken, so let's just follow him for a bit longer. Uh, he's still also leading, so that's all the more reason to do so. So we see here some um, kind of... Not sure what to call it. So he throws in the check, takes this one here, takes back. So what are you going to do about g2? And he just moves the rook out of the way. Very interesting. He's just like... You've only got a pawn in hand, I'm not worried about g2. Blocks. So, yeah, if ever had white, so how do you defend g2 in general? One way is to put a pawn on g2. That's often a bad way to defend g2 because in takes, takes, pawn here is always a danger. But sometimes it is the best way. Uh, other ways to defend g2, if you have a knight, you can always put a, sometimes put a knight on f4. And that's a really good way of chasing away any piece on h3 while also defending g2. A great way to defend g2, if you can, is to get your rook to g1. But obviously you can't here because king h1 just falls at g2. And black just got uh, further progress into your position with tempo. That's just a slight summary of how to deal with g2 threats. Because when I was starting Crazy House and Bug House, this is just such a common theme. You How do you deal with g2? Um, and notice what Chicken did in this game. Just get out of the way. Don't give black pieces. Black, black wants to attack along these squares. So just don't give him pieces to attack with. Don't give him diagonals in particular to attack with. Now that um, 
He's got to chase away that bishop at some point, but he's very chill about it for now. Um, this is quite a brilliant play. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just let's look at this. We're just a bit slower. He moves the bishop out of the way. Okay. Just backs off. Goes for an attack. Why did he do that? Because he wanted this. He didn't want to give a rook. So he didn't go on to give a rook. Rook would, would go to f1 and potentially cause trouble. Uh, okay, so he's, again, he doesn't want to give... Oh, queen takes bishop? Now what's... Queen takes bishop is... Not a problem, why not? Um, well, the queen can just take that, or take the, take the rook, or take the queen, or anything. Um, 400 hours checkmate. Ah, oh, that was brilliant, actually. The queen takes rook, deflecting the queen from f3. No, that was a brilliant little technique. Um, that was a check. No wonder he couldn't take the bishop. Okay. He did this because he didn't want to lose the rook. Yes, yes, queen takes rook was the big threat. Queen takes rook, queen takes queen, knight f3. And that's what happened eventually in the game. Uh, hi there, Bakus. What is this game? Very funny. Um, but yeah, you have been absent a long time. Um, so yeah, pieces you take, the pieces for, for anyone who is new, um, the pieces you take from your opponent, switch sides. And if you're interested, check out my YouTube. And I have a history of the game on my YouTube. A three-hour history for those who have time. Um, so what's actually happening? So Chicken chicken ended up losing two in a row. I hope he's not he's not giving up after that. Uh, the finisher has also been having trouble. Uh, he just lost to Bugzilla. I mean, we can just have a quick look at that game. Uh, the finisher was white, lost to Bugzilla. How so? With the French defense and uh, getting the rook to g8. Looks like white's doing fairly decently though. He's made, oof, look at those inroads into black's position. Um, so yeah, white's doing quite nicely, even gets the queen. But black's got something to say. Oops, he loses the queen back and suddenly there's a big attack. Ah. And uh, this is quite a beautiful attack that Bugzilla conjures up. And he's completely winning. What was the turning point then here? I mean, there was a mate. Yeah, taking that knight, that knight was poisoned. That's basically it. Um, so, Chicken Crossroad, is he playing a game now? He is playing again against Matza. And let's go to the beginning of this game. Um, Mikos7 says, there's a guy with a deep voice who uploaded Crazy House commentary, but I forgot his channel name. Okay, I can tell you. It was called Atrophied. No, Nicholas Thice he is now. Uh, yeah, Nicholas Thice on... Uh, that's the one. There you go. I just uh, put it in the Twitch chat. Um, he, he went by the Leechess name of Atrophied. Um, but, uh, well, long story short. Ah, another one. Someone else. Um, well, there was Clearcast. And... There was really bad at Crazy House, who streamed for a little bit. Um, but the real streamer is Jan Lee. I mean, um, then there's also Flourish has streamed a little bit with Antic. Uh, and Antic's got quite a deep voice. Um, so yeah, it's Crazy House streamers in, in order. In order of appearance, so the first one would have been Nicholas Thice, then Jan, Jen Jan Lee, who's like the main Crazy House streamer. Then who else would have? Uh, then myself. Then Clearcast, Mugwort, Mugwort's another one. Um, and then really bad at Crazy House did it for a bit. Flourish and Antic uh, had uh, did the the Crazy House World Championship for a bit. So queen here, pawn here, he's running away. So that's a good one. Yeah, you take here. So don't keep him open. And now you're opening up this square, h3. Notice how all these squares are covered. So he's like there, check. Okay. Uh, he, mm -mm. Oh, very nice. The queen pins. Okay, interesting, interesting. If this, that's a bit annoying. Knight here, double check. Okay, this is better. This is much better. So this, if he blocks. So he has to go here. And then... And then, then what? Okay, that's the best way of doing it. These two are blocked by the queen and by the bishop. 
and uh, so he just does it with pawns. Excellent. Miko7 says, not a streamer, just YouTube. Huh. Um, interesting. Don't know anyone who's just on YouTube. Ooh, there was there is someone called Duvid, a very recent player who's who's uploaded some stuff to YouTube, and I did in fact a joint stream with him once. So that's that's also a possibility. And there are rush there's a there are streams in Russian on YouTube, one or two streams in Russian. So, so Chicken is doing rather well with these f7 attacks against Bugzilla. Again, we saw this pattern. Yeah, notice you take the pawn and, and you, ca you can't put the pawn on h6 and draw the king out because then you have no material to attack. So you're putting the pawn on g5 instead to try and pick up some, some extra material to continue the attack. Here, so you can take this material with check. If bishop takes knight here, check, take another piece with check. And what's the effect of all this? The effect is to, you're basically clearing out all the pieces around black's king. Put a piece here. And you're keeping your attack going. If, as long as you're picking up pieces, knight takes bishop, he's now attacking the queen. So you see how this is, how, how chicken is utterly crushing uh, in this game. Now, he only has one piece in hand though, to be fair. Oh, Krusky, of course. Yes. Indeed. So he was actually the equal first streamer, um, along with Nick Thice. Indeed, indeed. Krosky. And he actually was the first to play Crazy House 960. Uh, he had a Crazy House 960 um, game which he set up. You know, they played it manually in, a, in an analysis board or something. Um, whereas now you can play that on, on pychess.org, pychess.org, which is a spin-off of Lee Chess. Uh, the PY stands for Python. So this is not going to be a successful game for black because, um, oh, what, what? That was sneaky, that was sneaky. That was sneaky. He had two queens and he just said, I'm just going to distract the rook with one of the queens and then come in and mate you with the other one. That was sneaky. Yes, so well remembered, Mikos 7, um, Thomas Krosky, who still plays on his, his handle on Leeches is Krosky. Um, so what's, we're playing, it's against, chicken against Duvid, I, I mentioned Duvid, so Duvid also has a YouTube. Um, But it's not entirely a chess YouTube, it's a sort of the, the ramblings of a chess coach or something. Uh, and he has all kinds of stuff on there. Like random random um, talks he goes to. He live streams them. So David's giving up the queen. Um, so I think he's going to run out of material, that's basically his problem here. Uh, and once it's Black's turn to attack, I think he could just take all, right? He could run away as well. So many choices, because bishop covers the knight checks. You always have to check what are the knight checks. Okay, so here I think you could, um, I think, let's see, knight here check, just straight away, knight here check. The point is king can't go, because queen here, rook takes knight, there will be checkmate. But if pawn takes, bishop takes with threatening mate, is that really, is that strong enough? Hmm. That's something t tempting. Oh, and chicken plays it, so that's, that's very... Uh, chicken agrees with me. And of course threat now is queen here checks, so you have to take it, or you have to go knight g3. Uh, oh, he just hangs the mate. Okay.
So let's see what, what uh, other games are happening. We are now 45 minutes into the Elite Crazy House Arena. Chicken is on 44 points, the finisher chasing on 28. Uh, they both had a few losses. There's no one storming up like Bugzilla's had a, had a tough time first GSVC, then losing three times to Chicken. So he's really had, and then again to Chicken. So Chicken's really been a, a problem. So this is Chicken against Matza. Um, yeah, we haven't seen much of the, the London system which uh, um, which Albert was asking for because um, Chicken seems to play E4. So I should maybe, maybe we'll try and switch it up and look at someone else and then we can discuss more about the London system. Although we have, we have, we've seen some interesting stuff, but we could discuss it more. And the problem with takes, 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 seems okay. But he goes an even better way, does he? Oh, how does this work? If queen takes, bishop takes. Threat of bishop, hmm, not sure what the threat is actually. The knight's doing a great job. The real weakness in black's position is f6, and it's covered. This can just be taken. There's always a danger of black just promoting and getting a queen. That's also vaguely annoying. Um, hmm, should you go here? So if you get a queen, this bishop's blo blocked up a little bit. Okay, two knights, so knight here and here, maybe. Seems like a powerful idea. Someone is challenging me to standard chess, but they obviously don't know what I do. Uh, although I did play a game of standard chess this morning, uh, in 45-45, and uh, I'm happy to say I, w I won in 11 moves. <laughs> um, Okay, so he's just simply threatening mate on e7. So I, I've hit my peak in class called 2059. Um, okay, so it's check, back off, like, why not? And then, it, oh, that was quite cunning. That was a cunning check. Uh, but yeah, this is the idea I wanted all at the beginning, just knight here. Ah, but this pawn is here now, so it's a lot more difficult. Oh, the bishop's hitting it. Okay, yes, and maybe knight here. Knight here. Queen here, so knight here has to come this way. Then take. Oh, he's not. He's not doing that. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's fine as long as the king is safe, and I think he is actually. So knight takes knight check. Knight then knight takes rook, and he's threatening knight takes f6. So this is very strong. Knight takes f6, and rook e8 is a mate threat. King takes knight, and yeah, it's checkmate. It looks sli slightly hairy for white, but um, convincing win nonetheless. Okay, let's see if we can follow someone else. Uh, let's follow um, let's follow the finisher for a few games because he's chasing in second place, and he's playing against GSVC, who's also incredibly strong. Uh, but it's another e4 business. We're seeing this opening a lot. This e4 and then this d5. Um, maybe it's the latest fashion in theory or something. Um, so what is it exactly? Just going directly for the jugular. Maybe it's because it's one plus one. I'm not quite sure. Um, I can't say much about theory. Okay, so this finisher's done a great job defending f7, and he's being challenged. Notice a, bit, a bishop defending your king is always a good idea to keep your king safe. Um, notice the queen defending f7. I should really try and get back up to the live action. Takes, takes. Really nice. He wins GSVC's queen. Just simply backs off. Okay, he can do that as long as white doesn't have some pawns to annoy him with. This just takes, takes. So now he has a pawn. Uh, okay, well, um, probably a pawn's going to land here. Pawn here or here? Ah, he misses a chance. So pawn here, probably the threat was pawn takes knight, pawn takes bishop. Maybe this is too nasty. Pawn takes pawn. Check. Um, hard to say. Oh, this bishop's got trapped. Is that a problem? Queen's got any attack, has to back off. Oh, the queen, his queen's no longer defending f7. Oh, really? He wanted a pawn here? Ah, I see. Those knights were thinking of coming in. Okay. So it was all intentional. Uh, I'm having a hard time keeping up with the, this. Uh, knight takes f7 simply is strong. Yeah. Knight takes queen. Queen here's a mate threat. Oh, but black has... The two knights and the queen, and it's enough to mate. Oh, nice mate from the finisher. So two knights, queen, and a diagonal is always enough to mate. I just want to show that, in case anyone was new to Crazy House. In this position, it looked like black had just lost his queen. 
bad idea. But look what, what Black has in hand. Two knights, a pawn and a queen. And that's something always to keep a, keep an eye on, because if you've got two knights, a pawn and a queen, and this square and this square are not, are not defended, and this square is not defended, um, and this square is not defended, none of those squares are defended. You just go knight to h3, you can't go here because you have the smothered mate idea. Beautiful. So he has to go. He has to. So he has to take it. But if he takes it, that means f3 comes in. You can go here, or you slide. To, go to g2. Either way, you're forced to g2 with that diagonal. So you need two knights, a diagonal, and then you just swing your knight back. And in this particular case, he can't even run forwards because all the squares are covered. So he has to go back. So it's very easy. In some games, the king can run here, and you go queen here, check or queen here, check king here. And so the only point when two knights, a pawn and a queen are not defended, maybe if this square is defended, then you don't have, for example, some kind of uh, pawn, at here, pawn here, pawn here, and finishing it off. So in the initial position, basically what you have to watch out for is, are all these squares weak? This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, because you need the pawn to bring him out, this one. If any of those squares are defended, there's a chance it won't work. If this square is defended, you could take the first knight. If this square is defended, you could take the second knight. If this square is defended, then there's no diagonal check. Uh, if this square is defended, you don't have the smothered mate. Because knight here, uh, rook something here, you just gain knight takes if it's defended. So if it's defended by, by more than just the rook. So th those are the squares to watch out for. If this pawn is defended, again, you don't have the smothered mate. So if all these squares are not defended more than in this position. And this and then this one is the final one. Already the king will be out, so it's, it's still probably good for black. But anyway, enough um, of crazy house basics, which are probably boring most people. Um, we have actually a big matchup here. The finisher against Chicken Crossroad, number two against number one. Um, so what is happening? Hard to say. I mean, let's go back to the beginning again. So you have a Scandi. Um, harassing the knight. Okay, so we, we saw this before. Ch uh, chicken going, okay, it's hitting this g2. Takes, oh, this is looking dangerous. Check. But then what is the follow-up? So blocks takes the queen was an idea, but takes the queen obviously didn't work. So something was dangerous. So castles, gets the king out of the way. Okay, we're up to the live positions. Very. So he takes the knight, pins it, Oof, defends the bishop, attacks the bishop. So chicken slightly short of pieces. Pawn takes bishop is a serious threat, though. Rook here is mating. Oh, no, it's not. It's not mating. Ah, and then in the meantime, knight here was a mate threat because pawn takes queen here is checkmate. Or does it move the knight in, takes queen here is checkmate. And basically, it looked like rook here is mating, but queen takes, takes, rook takes, and the finisher had calculated accurately. There was no, there was no mate. He had double protection on the back rank. So what's happening now? The finisher is up against another toughie, GSVC. So there's no check. Normally you go bishop or queen. Um, if you go bishop, sometimes the queen swings across and hits g2. That's the idea. Queen on e6 is a little bit awkward because then the, the bishop can never develop. Uh, so basically these queens face off, and it's a game of, like, it, if you take first, then um, it, it helps black. Because it helps black develop. It, it, so he develops with tempo, basically. So you, so you lost the move. So if, uh, the finisher says white lost that game of that staring contest. Um, so a mini victory for black there. Um... But he still has got a long way to go before he can get this bishop out. So that's why maybe I'd say white might have a slight edge. Just because he's playing with an extra piece. I mean, this bishop is very easy to develop. Um, whereas this bishop is going to take a while. Okay, so GSVC playing with a very flat setup. Doesn't quite have the pieces to do this. If you had another knight, it might be lethal. If you have a knight and a queen, so exchange queens and take a knight. Okay, the problem is queen takes queen, pawn takes queen. Hmm. The mating squares are protected for any queen trade. 
Knight takes knight, maybe he's thinking of pawn here. Knight takes knight, pawn takes... So as long as you're... Yeah, he is thinking of that. So he's basically saying, I am safe. Um, and I think he's right. Now what's the threat here? Simply knight takes c2, so he just puts a knight to defend it. Um... Uh, so that's pinning the knight. That's uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, but that's still pinning the knight, but now he's defending with the queen. Okay. Queen is a weird defender because you could just deflect it very easily. So it's a weird defender. I don't like defending with the queen. Just simply bishop back, for example. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. So white's trying to make a queen factory, which is slightly concerning because, as I said, that bishop can't just go to e7 and then give it some kind of protection. So... Um, Going to get another queen. Black, uh, black is just really struggling here. I mean, having said that, black does have counter threats, but are they are they worth anything? Knight takes pawn, king here, because queen takes bishop is mate. Okay, so he backs off the queen, his last piece, that last active piece to try and defend. And uh, black flags, you know, plus one second increment isn't really enough to calculate. Um, so DSVC flags, and the finisher is rewarded with another game with Chicken Crossroad. So he's getting a he's getting a tough a tough day. Um, let's just put this here. See what people are saying in the chat. So in the chat, uh, Freebie is saying how he does really well against Bugzilla as black, is it? But that he has to withdraw. Um, saying Bugzilla always falls into the same traps. Well, we won't. We are, yeah, well, we'll see. Um, so this game, the finisher against Chicken. Okay, so we've got um, chicken going for these uh, attacks on h7, and yeah, the idea is you get your queen in and, and try and cause some mayhem. Um, but wh what's the follow-up? I'm not quite sure. Like, uh, if you backed off, then if white ever got a bishop, it'd be very dangerous. But you could also just block. Take the pawn. Okay, yes, this is the idea of these attacks. It's you. You t okay? So just. This is actually quite instructive. So going all the way back here, the moment white took on h7, what he was basically indicating is, I'm going to attack you on the light squares. So straight away you know that these are the squares he's going to attack on. And as the game plays on, just watch, okay, ironically he, he's, he attack, takes up, picks up a knight on the dark squares, but the whole point of that h7 sack is I'm going to attack you on the light squares. And this is it. Takes, and g6. He's leaving g6 free for a for a knight or something, but he's got something like bishop here, pawn here, and rook here, picking up the rook. So those sorts of ideas. But uh, he hasn't been able to play it because he's being attacked now himself just a little bit. The threat was, um, was what? Yes. So black's doing um, a dark square attack, and uh, this is actually quite dangerous because um, the knight, okay, so it's all over, because takes bishop here, and uh, why is it all over? If king goes here, knight here check is going to be trouble. If king goes here, it's going to be pawn here check, king here, and then. Uh, no, hang on a second. If king goes. If you block, queen takes, queen there's checkmate. If you back off, knight here check, um, king here, and uh, pawn there, king takes pawn, knight takes rook, double check, king here. Um, it's, it's, it's mating, is what I want to say. Um, Maybe, maybe I open it up in the analysis board to show it, because it's quite a nice mating pattern. So here we see, again, a kind of delayed Scandi kind of setup, but it's turned into a sort of French without yet playing e6. Uh, maybe just quickly show you the mate at the end of the last game. So bishop at f5, let's turn on the engine to quickly show it. So it's not completely straightforward, but... Uh, the idea is, suppose, if, if you block, it's just going to be checkmate. So you don't block. So 
if king g8, then at h7, here, knight here, takes, knight takes rook. If king h8, rook at h7, king to g8. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated. You have to pick up the knight, and and this is checkmate next move. Um, and if he goes to to g8, so g8 we just saw as at h7. If he goes to h8 immediately, then it's knight at g6 immediately, and it's the same whole, it's the same old pattern. Then h7 takes, takes, and we saw it already. If king g8, we have um, bishop h7. If king takes f8, we actually have a rook. Uh, that's also working. Um, but lots of different ideas. Bishop takes here is fine as well. If the king tries to go back here, then. Um, Sorry, new knight at g6 is checkmate. Okay, so lots and lots of different mates is the point. Um, but coming back to this current game, so so the finisher is attacking on f7. It looks very strong. The black king is very open. He wants to pick up a knight. He wants to stay safe. Black is just attacking back. No fear. Uh, what? That is insane. What? No, 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 no. Um, so basically, in this position here, uh, yeah, white's completely winning. And he goes on, um, for example, knight, at G, um, knight at g4 is good, at g3 is good. Okay, so he goes at g3, very good move. Takes. King takes. Maybe a bit of a mistake. Maybe the knight was a defender of your king, and it could never come out because you just take it, and it had no future taking anything. So the knight was knight could have been left there. By by the finisher, um, and you could just go for a counterattack. The, the black king is very open. Go knight g4, pick up a bishop, maybe put the bishop on here, and so forth. But anyway, he took it, um, and apparently the move is e5, just getting in on h3. Um, knight g5. Okay, so and the defense for white here was f4, interestingly, but uh, he just backed off. This is still fine here. Uh, white is still doing well. But he needs some. He needs a move like h4 or knight h5 check. Okay, so he just did this, and this is not so good because knight here check, and uh, king f1 is the only move that survives in this position, and it's still good for white. But instead, he went to king h1, and this is a forced mate in th in three. Knight it takes f2 check. King goes back here. Knight back here check, and here pawn here is checkmate. Uh, the knight covers the dark squares, and the pawn covers the light squares. Crazy mate. Um, hi there, Crazy Home ZH. Indeed, he is. Um, so we were watching the finisher. The finisher's just lost two in a row. So maybe we should put two in a row, both to chicken as well. Uh, GSVC has not been having such a great run either. Is anyone on a on a real streak? Um, only chicken, really. Um, there's no one like coming up the ranks, surprising everyone. Um, so let's go back to watching chicken. And we'll see a lot of these other players like, along the way in their head-to-head -head with Chicken. Um, and just to say, by the way, this is a $100 prize tournament thanks to JK the Bullfrog. So, um, so appreciation for his generosity in, uh, in supporting this tournament. Especially from the finisher who, who's been running this tournament. So appreciation to him too for running the tournament. Ah, uh, so this is Banana Joe's really got some bind uh, against Chicken in this, you know, a bind on the light squares. It's really very uncomfortable. But f6, whoa, whoa, and out of nowhere, he suddenly has to sack his queen. Um, and uh, black, yeah, black runs out of time and just loses the attack. And yeah, that was another game where Chicken was losing but uh, came back and won. Okay, so it's now chicken against GSVC. It's uh, no easy, no easy games against GSVC. Okay, so notice slight weakness on C7 because he's gone for this. But um, white's not really attacking the weakness, and it's always can easily be defended because black is up material. So why is black up material? Because white went for a pawn sack. So, yeah, so black is up a pawn. Black is up a pawn, and 
actually quite nice development. You can even go here, crazily enough, although this might weaken this square. It's this, 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 and then the queen's trade. So opening it up is not a good idea because white is ready for the open file and black isn't ready yet. So quite an, an annoying move this because you're tempting this but it doesn't work. So probably sim simply going here. And maybe he was thinking this but then this comes. So that's why black's been thinking so long I think um, on that move before eventually after long hard thought playing at h3. Takes, takes, takes. Interesting. Just saying white has nothing and now this suddenly is. So at h3 he could have just taken it. I guess he was afraid of at g2 but um, okay. Somehow I think black's just got enough pawns to just solidify everything. Or does he? Um, so going for at f2, but now this something's going to fall here. Takes, takes, bishop takes, bishop here, bishop takes pawn. This is the idea. Unless there's something stronger. There's also bishop takes rook, because if queen takes knight at, f, uh, knight at c7, picks up the queen. So it's a free rook, actually. So he goes for that. And, whoa, whoa, what is this? Knight here check takes, whoa. You don't expect this rook to come in with check. So that was sneaky. Um, and the king couldn't come in here, could it? Maybe there were other ideas. So black is going for, what? The rook can just take this. Oh no, the bishop takes, sorry. Um... Well, it looks like Chicken is trying to flag GSVC, which is interesting. Um, because GSVC is indeed on two seconds. But I don't know. I'm not sure if he'll succeed. He does succeed. It's probably because he's a winning in a winning position. But I don't know. I'm maybe going to have a quick look at the end of this. Um, this is quite, I mean, uh, this is a very nice move. Okay, so the point is if, if king e7, rook takes rook was the point, and just claiming that if you just queen, you're um, just simply rook at f1, um, black doesn't have enough uh, enough attack, because actually the white rook still provides defensive cover. Um, so takes, takes was interesting. Um, so still actually apparently this position is fairly equal, which is fascinating. Um, so blocks, rook at g1, pawn here, rook takes g2 is the best move, at h3, rook takes h2 again, the best move. So both players playing incredibly well, and then there's a mistake from white playing uh, queen e2, rather than playing bishop takes d5. So bishop takes d5, rook at g1 check, and just uh, running or something. Um, Okay, so saving that bishop. So he did this, this, and now... Yeah, so black should have just take and go pawn at g2, apparently, in this position. That was very strong. Doing this, now the white king actually gets some safety. Uh, if, knight, if knight e4, you can just take the knight, um, this knight. So the white king is actually doing okay now. So attacks here. Knight here, you just take it. So, so white is actually doing completely fine. Um... White's crushing in this position, in fact, but flags. So he actually the flag was was a flag in a in a winning position. Okay. So the win was bishop takes c5. The bishop comes back to defend. It's hard to believe there's a mate here, because there's so many pieces around the black king. But apparently there's a mate here. Um Knight c8, crazy idea. The point is the bishop's pinned. It's just a deflecting, so that the king is in a mating net, so you have to take, but now we can take this bishop. King takes, of course king takes, because if we just back off, then we are just mated in one. Um, but now this king is, is very much exposed. You cut off the escape this way, and we're just going to mate with pawns on the other in the other direction. So very simple mating idea, if you're smart enough to see bishop takes pawn blocks, knight at c8, knight at c8, deflect the defender. Pretty hard to see in practice. So GSVC was winning that, but just didn't have the time. So we now go to the next game. Um, Chicken is up against Bugzilla, and so are we going to see the usual things? No, it's like slightly different. Oh, painful. He's picking, up, he's picking up the queen. Picking up a lot of material, and so can Chicken finish the job? He's got only two seconds or so on the clock.
can't defend. He's just trying to run that king and hopefully get some safety. Oh, that king looks so dangerously mated. It's checkmate. No way. Again, that's the game. Someone was completely winning. Come on, he just needs to run. Um, I was thinking he just needs to run up, and white is completely winning. Or he just needs to take this pawn. And instead, he just runs straight into a mating attack. And suddenly it's f2. The bishop cuts off the king. The pawn cuts off the king. Uh, chickens just walk straight into a mating net. And lost the game against Bugzilla. Real shock, because in this position he's completely winning. He's threatening queen at g7 mate. Uh, he just needs to get the king safe. King here is completely safe because black doesn't have enough pieces to 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 get in. So um, let's watch Bugzilla for a bit. Well, it seems like we're watching chicken after all, because it's Bugzilla against chicken. So Bugzilla is white against chicken. We've got a lot of e4 this this whole series. Uh, hi there, crazy home. H4, H5, very good manoeuvre. G takes H3 would have led to knight takes H5. He allowed that deliberately. Black looks better. Um, yes, this is a couple of games ago. Um, with the pawn at H3 and the rook here, G takes H3 would have led to knight takes H5. Yes, indeed. The rook would no longer be defending that pawn here. Yes, that was a couple of games ago. Yep, nice point. It all goes by rather quickly. So, Bugzilla is... He sneaked a win he did not deserve against Chicken, and uh, he now developed with Tempo. Oh, surely not Knight here. What? Um, okay, to be fair, Bishop here, there's Pawn here, so maybe that's not so smart. So, and Knight here is actually very smart, because it stops Knight at f3, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, yeah, it's spot on, this move. Knight at f3, the point is if Pawn takes Pawn, f3 is defended. So Bugsa absolutely knows what he's doing. He's a great defensive player. Uh, you've got to make sure black doesn't get a second knight, though, because the second knight would be fairly lethal. Um, Bugsa is going to... Okay, he develops, but his king is really uncomfortable. It's like, how is, okay, how is it going to survive? That's how it's going to survive. It's going to have to go for a run at some point. And he's got to watch the time. He's he's 30 seconds down on the clock, so Chicken's just very relaxed on the clock. I think he just has to move this king out of the way. Maybe there's no rush. Because they're just causing a little bit of mayhem, that's all. Okay, that knight was guarding f3, and it's not guarding f3 anymore, so if black ever gets a pawn or something, at f3 is really annoying. Oh, the king wants the king wants to run. Just take it. And um, Bishop here is, is Bishop here a threat? Yeah, Bishop here might be a threat. So what actually happened instead? A pawn check first. Just take it. Yeah, this is not so clear. So he's defending the mate. Maybe it is clear. But um, yeah, he's out of material. That's the problem. So it is very clear. So it's one of those hook mates which we talked about at the beginning of the stream. A, uh, a rook or a knight, def um, a rook or queen, a major, defended by a knight which is defended by a pawn. And the knight stops the king running this way. Okay, good um, good win by Bugzilla. Um, it's actually quite hairy at some point. Um, maybe, maybe defend, so king d7, I thought, yeah, king d7 looked good, e6. Bishop takes, bishop takes queen, and yeah, this was this a critical point? So at f2 was an interesting idea, but here. Was bishop takes e3, e6 necessary? Yes, it was. Um, apparently even king takes bishop was an interesting idea. Okay, so pawn here doesn't look awful, but uh, apparently queen b5 check is the really annoying move. Um, knight c6. And queen takes b7. Um, or maybe not. f2, king d1, e2. f2, king d1. And there's nothing there. Um, so that, was, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't played. But maybe the move missed then was simply taking the queen and then threatening mate. And 
says there is no mate here, surprisingly. Is that what you're trying to say? There's no mate here? Takes this bishop? Takes this! Wow! No mate! So why not knight here check? Because if you take here then this is checkmate. But then again you can just about survive, survive by going king e7. Well this is kind of hard to see. Bishop g5, bishop f6. And there's no mate apparently. Wow. Knight takes e3, defending all this stuff. But then you just take back the knight, you're still attacking this. And if you just uh, take this pawn, okay, this is no good. So suddenly, um, suddenly you're the one, um, knight c4, and uh, knight at b4, for example, checkmate. So suddenly black could be the one mating. Okay, so Chicken Crossroads lost a couple. Bugzilla is uh, is on the streak a bit. Uh, let's let's keep watching Bugzilla because uh, maybe he's getting it together. So it's a French defense, and he's playing against retarded Platypus, who's a very strong player. And uh, we see whenever if you sack on f two, it means you want to go on a dark square attack. So what's PC just taken there? He's just taken a bishop. Bishops are great pieces to attack those dark squares with, but okay, he, he opts to attack the, the light squares with them. So I'm not sure if Bugzilla's got enough here, but um, I think Platypus has defended rather well. But, but 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 how to continue? See, this pawn is annoying on f6. You want a knight on f6. So you, you wonder, how did that happen? Um, so, I mean, there are slow ideas of pawn here, queen here, but it's very slow. And Platypus flags. Oh, that's a shame. Um, I thought he'd been, he was doing rather well. Um, in fact, he was winning. Um, so bishop takes f6, e takes f6, here takes, check, here. So what was, what was the key ideas that were missed? Um, knight takes d4 is even an idea, apparently, giving up the queen. But still, this looks really decent. OK, so this is the key idea missed. With your three knights, um, Actually, the really fancy way of doing it is just go queen d8 check. Just throw away the queen. And then go at e7 here. And then go, I was going to say, hmm, that doesn't work. Then go at d7. Okay, so this is very important you do this correct. Correctly. If king takes, that's not a good idea because knight at f8. Um, king to e8. Knight at d6 check takes and use your third knight to mate. So how about that? And if obviously if you take the knight, then you're 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 going to run into the same kind of mate. Um, but you can just go from this direction here now. That's good. So this, that's a beautiful mate. Okay. Uh, but what if you take with the bishop, which seems much more natural? Well, now you've just blocked off your king's escape route, so that mate just works even more efficiently. So queen queen d8. Um, Queen d8 is a, a very fancy move um, in this position, which uh, which Platypus had. But it's not the unique mate, because uh, knight d6 immediately is, is also apparently checkmating with these sorts of ideas. If, if, if here, then you've got queen takes d6. So I imagine you'd want to go here. But then, oh, queen takes d6 is checkmate. Oops. Um, so here, queen takes d6, blocks, knight takes e6, check, you're threatening this checkmate, so you better take it. Um, and now, queen c7, king e8, and knight at d6 is checkmate, stopping the king running. So lots and lots of mates in that final position in which Platypus flagged. So a little bit unfortunate, uh, but Bugzilla won and continued his streak. So now it's uh, Bugzilla against the finisher. This is a bit of an e4, e5 fest, isn't it, today? Um, we're not... Okay, what we'll do next game is I'm going to follow PKNM, just for those people who are interested in the London system, because then you'll get your, your London system fix. Because um, PKNM is a very is a reputed d4 player. 
Uh, is this a threat? No, I think it's double defended, so I think it's okay. This takes takes. If queen takes notice, knight here is annoying. He does that. King goes back, so at least it's not check, and now we're going to go for a mate. Do we have a mate? So rook here check just blocks. Takes, takes, takes. The bishop is just doing a wonderful job defending everything. It's. Oh, interesting. Oh. Wow. Oh. But, but, but. Oh, he had to go for defense in the end. That's no good. He's, he's going to be overloaded. Oh, no, he's not, actually. I'm not sure who's winning this. I'm, but that was a well, that was another sneaky find from Bugzilla. Ah, this is crazy, this game. <laughs> um, somehow, Bugzilla is defending. Bugzilla is very famous for being good at defending, by the way. That has to be said, although he hasn't developed his knight. If you want to criticize, develop your pieces, man. Uh, oh, he, he's going to make a mated here, though, because he's losing the queen with check. Uh, he should have just taken the queen with check, my goodness. He's going to... It's, he's going to lose this now. Oh, what? Rook there was mate. Now the bishop defends it. Oh my goodness. Panic on both sides. Um, I'm going to start this game for posterity. <laughs> but uh, the queen comes in. A pawn will mate. Uh, a knight will mate. Yeah, any piece will mate. So finisher finds the mate. But my goodness, there were so many mismates in that game. I mean, that's, uh, we'll, we'll come back to it at the end. It's one of the games of the, of the arena. Got 38 minutes left. Tense stuff. Um, and the finisher takes it. So let's, let's go back to the, the arena. That, that breaks Bugzilla. Bugzilla was on a nice streak. Finisher's just broken his streak. So let's follow the finisher for, for a bit. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, the finisher against Bugzilla. Um, so what is this crazy line? I mean, this is all fairly normal. So he decides to open up the G file. So the finishers. Yeah, this looks this looks good for the finisher. So knight f6 is a real problem. Um, this looks just simply good. So, yeah, Mixu just said in, in the Discord chat, lol, that game against Bugzilla. If OK was watching, I wonder how many oh my gods he said. <laughs> in the, yes. So, uh, quite a lot, actually. I just need to get this so I don't, I'm not, hmm. OK, just need to just, can't have it covering up, that's the problem. Okay, um, so just missed the last few moves. Yeah, f6 is just a problem in this position, but you don't put a knight there because although it's bishop takes, pawn takes, then you end up with a pawn there. So you want to somehow deflect that that bishop. So how to do so? Uh, what's happening here? Like. I was happy up to bishop e7, and uh, black is just struggling just about to hold on. He's defending. Bishop here, so he's trying to take a knight, because then maybe they're nasty ideas. Counterattack. Takes, counterattack. So this is, so black's kind of like fighting back in a way. Check, but this rook is all, all the time like hanging. Oh, he's got no defenders. He's got no blockers, I mean. This can't be right. The knight is somehow defending, but he's only got a queen to block with, so that's no good at all, because that would be checkmate. So he's just got to block with the queen. Takes. Oh, does he do something else? Oh, that's... that's. 
interesting, but this is going to mate now. Or is it? Pawn here. King takes pawn. Bishop here, maybe. Oh, he's got two queens. Okay, that's just very easy. Just mops up, mops up that game. Yeah, so we see the number of, of missed mates. Um, if I find the word lost, 11 times in that game was a forced checkmate lost. And that was 11 swings. <laughs> so that's, that's, quite, that's quite something. So the finisher against Chicken. So Chicken is leading and the finisher is second in this arena. So this is basically the finisher's chance to try and claw Chicken back. Okay, so what can we say about this sort of position? Um, f3 is interesting. The problem would be if white ever got a pawn, because bishop takes pawn, pawn takes at f2 would be checkmate. So that's why it's not so wise. Um, so that's why he goes for h3 instead, just to tra chase it away. Um, so in doing so, I think white has actually won the opening battle. Which is not surprising because white is the finisher and he knows how to play openings. Um, he's put a lot of pressure on this square. Just castles. He's, he's potentially losing a pawn. But notice how the key e2 square is covered. So he hits the knight. The knight will probably just have to back off again. Indeed. And now... Yeah, white got really good development. Black can't castle for, for a couple of moves. So he's threatening at b4. The only thing is, the finish is down to the last 10 seconds, whereas chicken's got 42 seconds left. That's the one... Ooh, what is this about? That I don't get. No, this I really don't understand. Pawns are really important in Crazy House, because pawns are the catalyst for your attacks. Uh, so, finish is really solid here, but the only thing is he's got no time. And, well, I was saying he's really solid, but it's not clear, actually. Yeah, black was crashing through. Like, hang on a second. So, in this position here. Okay, at g5 is apparently not so bad. It's just simply stopping rook takes g7. Um, so, what, what was wrong with this? Maybe maybe bishop a3 is a great chess move. I thought it was a good move, stopping black from castling. Apparently it's not a strong move, because the bishop ends up being far away from the black king. Um, so that's kind of very counterintuitive. Um, I mean, I mean, very well played. Very well played by black to, to close out that game. Really impressive. Um, so what did white do right? This is bishop a3 move. It's a beautiful concept in chess, and even in crazy house, but apparently f3. Um, and the knight has nowhere to go to. Knight, g4, knight here, maybe? But then bishop here, so it's a pin. So that's not so pleasant. If just this, then this. Uh, this. Maybe bishop h4 again, just to secure the dark squares. Yeah. Notice not taking the free pawn because um, if you take that free pawn, um, queen takes d4. You have to defend, and then you're losing this. But um, yeah, this is a bit paradoxical. So if this queen can still take that pawn, though. Um, but now we've got bishop e3. Queen's winning lots of pawns. So, yeah, this is a bit double-edged, actually. Because I'd say my intuition is to, to try and guard this pawn. But I guess it's double attack. There's nothing you can do to save it. Okay, so I'm not going to go into a deep opening analysis. Let's, let's see. Who should we look at? Um, let's get back to watching 
Now, I said I'd watch PKNM, so let's watch PKNM because people want to see the London system. So I was saying that in this position, before you play e6, you should play h6. So let's see if... Ooh, he doesn't. So let's see if PKNM, PKNM punishes him for that. Not really. Um, I mean, here... I don't know if there's a case for that. Maybe not. Takes, 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 takes. Well, Blight's still doing okay, I think. So we're seeing a tax. Tax here, takes, 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 pawn here. Bishop here, defending. Takes, takes, takes. Bishop takes, threatening. Queen takes h2, defending. Why doesn't he take it? So he runs out. He loses his queen. Okay, so chicken is chicken is still in control. He only has a white only has a pawn and a queen and can't really attack. So it's kind of a sad situation. Uh, and uh, resigns or timeout. He's losing the rook regardless. Let's just checkmate in it's checkmate in one. Oh, he can go here, but then there's a rook here. Checkmate. King can't run out. Okay, so chicken proved too much for PKNM, but we're going to watch PKNM for another couple of games. Because um, I just want to... PKNM against GSVC, so it's a London system. This is going to be a bit, maybe... It's going to be tough for the London system up against GSVC, but we'll see what, what happens. GSVC in the think. This is, uh, this is how to play... Confusing things against the London system. So you could Fianchetti or I guess he's going for castles, even h6 at some point. Fairly safe setup. Okay, this is quite interesting. Um, just going for h4, h5. Takes. So e5 really well controlled. Oh, also, yeah, it, it protects bishop g5, that's true. Oh, but the bishop ended up being trapped. But is it? But if takes, takes, and this pawn is dangerous. So this bishop really is trapped, <laughs> but now d squares are slightly weak. Um, so it's going to be very tempting. So he does he does go this way. Notice you can't go here because takes takes and rook takes rook. So so black has ended up really solid. This has been very instructive how to play as black. Yeah. But good development from white, if he ever moves the bishop or knight, at least the queen is covered. I mean, he also just had takes, takes, and bishop here was also just seemed fine, but what he did was even stronger. Hitting the queen and winning the pawn for free. Um, and JSVC is just pushing, pushing white back. Um, it's no real... Oh, nice move. Nice move by white. Just picking up a free piece. Um, he just ignores it. Takes. Bishop takes knight check. Okay, so what's the value of this move? So I guess if you've taken the queen, you take here, rook here, pawn here, and you're, you're getting it on the back rank. Still, I, I feel like PKNM can't be doing, doing too badly because GSVC's got no pieces in hand. Um, the only thing is his king is in a mating net. Literally in a mating net. The knight is cutting off the king here and the queen is cutting off the king here. So that is an issue. Any check will mate. Bishop takes queen, knight takes... King takes knight is interesting. Ooh, very aggressive. Just gives the queen back. Notice the rook is providing some kind of cover, and the king just castles. Ooh, yeah, the, this rook is also providing cover, so it's just about okay, I guess. Queen providing cover. 
Queen can just take it. Okay, what is the follow up? Queen takes it. You go knight here, maybe. He's only got pawn and rook, so. I think the time pressure is getting to PKNM though. Oh, no, a, this is actually nice. Knight takes bishop. It's a huge threat. That knight was defending this bishop. So this is this is actually huge. And uh, GSVC flags. No, it's a wonderful play from PKNM. Um, taking down GSVC. Um, that was very impressive. His king was looking precarious, but GSVC was a bit short of material. Um, so really great win from PKNM. GSVC says in Discord chat, I really want to be able to make a move with less than two seconds. Because I guess it's either his mouse speed or his internet. Okay, now this is classic London system, so I should be I should be talking. Notice how, in response to bishop d6, white plays knight e5. Why? Because he doesn't want bishop takes, bishop pawn takes. Another op option is to back off, but that wastes the tempo. This is a much nicer move because it's aggressive, it's hitting f7. Um, it could eventually be hit by f6, but that's okay. Even if that knight's taken, a pawn on e5 is a really powerful piece. So, nice, aggressive move. Um, here, you don't need to put a knight on e4 because this is already defended. Um, so, yeah. So often, you, a knight would come here and a knight comes um, to challenge this knight here and this knight defends this. And if knight takes knight, even pawn takes, you can just get your rook on the file and so on. Okay, f6, takes with a knight, so knight with ideas of coming to here and here. Bishop here, hitting the knight, got to be a little bit careful. What is the one weakness having played f6 in this position? It's e6. So what's white's plan is just to focus all his forces on e6, get in on the light squares. So does PKM do the right thing? Yeah, he does something quite good. I was thinking bishop, but he, def he defends it with the rook, which I think is maybe even better. Backs off, takes, takes, and use the rook. And now use the bishop. The bishop is also important. Okay, so... Light squares are secure. What does um, Banana Jodo? He goes for the dark squares. Ooh, I'm not sure about Bishop H8. Maybe it's necessary. Looks very passive. I think it's a good move though, because this pawn is weak. So I think it might be actually quite a smart move. And he takes the knight. Okay, but by taking the knight, I'm worried about G7. But actually, yeah. oh, he's just so PKNM. Look. Look at what he's done. He's just cleared away all the attackers on the dark squares in, in his position. Knight here check. Wonderful move. He could take the rook and then put a pawn on h3. Or a bishop on h3. Uh, he's going for a... He grabs a pawn here. Uh, pawn on h3. Now. Threatening takes g2 checkmate. Very strong. Could he just take it? Okay, he takes here, but he could just take here, takes, and put another pawn on h3. Okay, he goes for the bishops. It's fine. Or bring a bishop to h3. He's got to be a little careful. Knight f6 is a check. But here he, he just finds a mate. So what was the mate? He put a bishop down. Okay, he just had the checkmate. Uh, with overwhelming, overwhelming material advantage. Just So that was a great, a great example of how to play the London system as black. Um, reinforce. So that's the thing about London system. You reinforce your position. You don't necessarily take, you just reinforce. You don't, so if, a, if your opponent tries to challenge, you block and so on. Okay, we're going to see another example. Again against Banana Joe. So, again, black against Banana Joe. He goes f6 first. Hmm, interesting. Um, and we're approaching 20 minutes to go. I think I'm going to switch to whoever's leading went after this game. But I, I'm, I'm doing this game just for those who are interested in how to play the London system. And it's basically it's a very solid setup, and it's the idea of you want to control squares and reinforce squares in your position. So notice this. This. You, no, what are the weak squares in your position? There, those two squares are just marked, and you reinforce them. So this is under attack. So you reinforce it. This is under attack. You reinforce it. Um, interestingly, bishop here check, and I'll normally you say bishop d6. So why bishop there? Well, we'll see how that does. Bishop takes knight, knight takes, knight here. So there's a slight weakness here, but um, you can see that Banana Joe is going for the e6 square. Queen comes in, okay. 
But this is still a problem. I think e6 is an issue in this position. If that knight can be kicked. So it looks like white is going for this and this. Deflect and then go e put He's going for the e4 push. Uh, that's what it looks like. I'm not sure if he's fast enough to do it, but that's what he's going for. Ooh, so notice that knight actually does defend this. Three pieces and only two two defenders. But he doesn't 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 want to doesn't want a huge trade. So he can um, just sidesteps. Um he could just go for the huge trade. I mean he he looks very safe. But uh, he, he wants to win that piece for free. Okay, now he's going to win it for free. Knight takes bishop. Let's go. Knight takes bishop. Ooh, I mean, there were ideas like this, maybe. But okay, so it goes for this. Oh, this is just game over. And yeah, it's either a flag or resign. It's just a flag. Okay, so that's how to play the London system. Great, great example. You try and control squares. You reinforce. Look at... This is just brilliant reinforcement of your position. And then you have to w watch out for these sacks on, on uh, d4 and d5. And that's what happened in, in this game. Sack on d4. Um, I was thinking he could take here. And let's just see. Just take, knight takes bishop. It's, uh, yeah, but takes or blocks are both good. Yeah, block at f7 is also strong, uh, apparently. But maybe a bit more risky. The point being, of course is you've got queen takes unleashing this. Um, but yeah, what he did was completely fine. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I'm going to follow whoever's winning. So who's winning? It's Chicken, who is on a beastly streak. Uh, I really should have been following him all along. And uh, we're going to see now how to beat the London system from the other side, I guess. Um, so Chicken going for a quick exchange of queens by opening up the d-file. No respect. Just getting in there. Getting in on the light squares. This is an utter annihilation, actually, so far, uh, this game. He's going for bishop takes knight and knight f2. Here's just going for a knight. If pawn takes pawn, he's going for a bishop takes pawn, maybe pawn. Hmm, why not just pawn takes pawn? What is pawn, bishop takes pawn, knight takes pawn, pawn here, those sorts of ideas. I don't, I'm not sure if it's justified. You can just take, ah, okay. And now bishop here, that's the problem. And you're picking up either the knight or the rook. So really dominating play from chicken. So it's a choice. Do you want your knight? Well, it's a free knight, so he's probably going to take it. Okay, he doesn't. He goes for a pawn rather than going for the free knight. Interesting. So why does he want a pawn? He wants a pawn, I think, with this. Yeah, why does... Okay, f6 square was weak, so he actually gives up the bishop, puts the bishop back on g2. So what does he want now? He's not going to win anything, he just exchange a rook for a bishop, it's not, that's not a material advantage. Okay, so it's a forking the two knights, but knights can defend each other rather easily. So I have to say, pknm is, is doing rather okay here. Although having said that, he suddenly got a queen. Um, and there's no obvious defense. If you block, he's just taking a whole rook. So, how to counter, how to counter. Um, so, PKM is safe, but really uh, down a lot on material. I think he's still fine. D D7 is weak. So I think white is actually winning this. Uh, chicken is going to try and play fast there. Bishop takes, bishop here, takes, takes, bishop back. So notice the reinforcement. This is, this is very important to reinforce your position. Look how chicken was really weak on these light squares and he just put all these pieces on the light squares and suddenly look at his pieces. They're really strong on the light squares. So this idea of reinforcement is very important. Pawn here, and uh, to be honest, this is just going to be, this is too strong from PKNM. He's threatening this and this. I can't see him losing this. How can you defend this and this? Only with the knight. Oh, but you could. He could. He could. Uh, I'm still expecting PKNM to win this. 
takes the free rook, rook ta uh, bishop takes knight, hitting the queen, all the while staying, black only has a pawn in hand, takes the queen, it's hard to mate this chicken, it's hard to mate for sure, pawn takes, gets the queen, takes, just going for a flag, there's only one second on the clock, it's got to play instantly. But he he's got him he's got him on the run it's it's all over, um, it's just a case of finding the mates. But it's not so easy. Rook takes pawn is checkmate. Yeah. Uh, right there. I mean, white has just got so many pieces. Uh, black resigns eventually. It's like <laughs> just lost every single piece on the board. <laughs> so yeah, wonderful game from PKNM uh, to take down Chicken Crossroad in the London system. So how about that? So PKNM got stopped, uh, stopped chicken, but and now the finisher gets a chance to maybe claw back a few more points. But I think it's too much now. Though it looked last time about thirty points between them. So I'll just open up the score. It's sixty-four against ninety-two. The finisher has also not been winning the last few games. Retarded platypus has seen to it that the finisher has also stalled. So. So chicken going for this interesting pawn sack line. If you go pawn takes pawn, you never develop your bishop. If you go bishop takes pawn, then we're trying to to win back the piece. He doesn't take the piece, why not? I guess he's attacking another piece. If you're forced to take the piece, then this, then you have to back off. He's not really interested in taking the piece, which is a mistake, I think, because that, that move here is annoying. Or is it? Bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop here is what he's planning? Don't know. But uh, I think chicken's going to regret this. It's burning a lot of time as well. Just bishop takes even is fine, but okay. Good. He sacks the queen, got a very solid structure. Does black without the queen though. Not sure if it was necessary to sack the queen, but... So white just going for picking up some pawns, and maybe put some putting some pawns on the 7th, and does... Can, this is a rather curious game. So can can white get in? White has no material at all. Knight takes bishop is a big threat. Bishop here defends though. Takes takes. Kind of important. Okay. You could just take that knight. Fair enough. And then go bishop e7. Castles loses a piece. Okay. Slightly uncomfortable. It's only a single knight. Oh, and <laughs> chicken mates. Okay, so that, <laughs> to be honest, even here, I, I'm sure. Yeah, you couldn't take it. By this point, it got too bad. Okay. So in this position here, just, just bishop e7 seemed fine, but um, takes takes, bishop e7 here. Knight at c3, so the king was safe where it was, and casting just hung the bishop, and then, well, it's still, it's still fine actually, but yeah, no, the threats are too great at that point. Okay, let's go back to the the live action. So retarded platypus is definitely someone we should be watching because he was. He was beating up chicken earlier, um, and only lost because of time. Uh, 
And we saw he, he stopped the finisher in his tracks in his bid to chase chicken. So let's see if he can stop chicken as well. Um, hmm, it's quite hard to give commentary here. So takes, takes knight here, looks nasty because it puts pressure on this pawn, but he goes for knight here, it's also looks decent. And the point is this is now falling, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, he decides to chase the queen around a bit more. Queen can never go here because of knight here, knight here check. So queen just sacks it, hits, oh, this is dangerous, hang on. So he goes for this, this, and tries to run this way. I think he's okay, because he can just run this way. Um, king takes pawn is very dangerous, because you, you, you might be getting mated. The knight then covers this square, and so if the king goes back, pawn here is checkmate. If the king goes, the king can't go up. So I think this is a very nifty little idea from Platypus. So the idea now is pawn at d2. It's kind of strong. But it doesn't quite have enough. Uh, was there something even stronger? Takes, takes, queen here, pawn there, back off. Pawn takes pawn. Okay, we need to mate now. <laughs> it's like, this is mating time. Pawn takes pawn is double check. What's, the, what is, what's he doing? What? what? Bush takes pawn just to block him off, and there's checkmate. Yeah, he had to, he had to attack at that point, and maybe there was nothing. Um, to be honest, there probably was nothing. Yeah, white had forced mate. So the, the black didn't even have a pawn for d2. Um, what did black do wrong? Just queen d6. But, but to be honest, I think knight here was... No, okay, apparently knight there was not more dangerous. Knight here... We take c6 is the problem. Knight takes e5. And at e3, okay, so black, that was very dangerous. So there was, a, there was a certain sense to going knight here. It's actually defended against at e3. Okay, so let's uh, continue following chicken. And this is the game to get 100 points with 8 minutes left. Um, he's up against Matza, it's another e4. And he's doing a, a rook lift. He's wasted a lot of tempos um, with, with that rook. Oh, bishop takes knight. Knight takes. Pawn takes rook. Knight takes. Looks a bit scary. He wants knight takes rook. Yeah, nasty move. Rook takes and bishop here picking up the knight. Rook here. Oh, no, no. Rook g3. Essential move. My goodness. Okay, okay, okay. So at least he gets the bishop back with the counter forks. This is a game of forks and counter forks. And then you get a counter fork again. Okay, let me just replay this. This forks and counter forks. Black thought he had found a nice fork. Unfortunately for him, white had a counter fork. Unfortunately for white, black had another fork back. <laughs> so that's the story of this game, eh? Um, so he who forks last wins. <laughs> so what's happening here? King d2, white's on a run. Tails. This is going to be mate. Queen takes and knight coming in here. Checkmate. Smothered mate. Well, that was nice. I mean, crazy. <laughs> Could white have done something better? For sure. I think cashing in earlier on f7. So the big two, chicken against the finisher, um, with five minutes to go. 
But it's a one plus one game, so it won't be the last game for sure. So this is interesting. So C4, I really don't like C4 because D3 is going to be a, a weakness in black's position, in white's position. Um, on the other hand, I don't like. Rook e8, rook e8, just giving giving the knight sack. I'm not sure about that. And 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 the finisher had to almost concede that was a mistake by moving the rook back to f8. And um, and chicken sort of playing horde with his pawns down the center of the board. Um, see how far they can go. If this just queen takes pawn, so it's not sure how. It's not clear how they how they. Are they going to make progress? Bishop here, takes, takes, takes. And so Chicken's having a little think. Bishop here does come. It does get rid of the rook, potentially. Ooh. So if, if only you can pick up a knight, that would be checkmate. So if knight takes queen, is it pawn takes queen or pawn takes rook? So it takes the rook. Goes for this. Interesting. So he's trying to pick up a knight. I mean, it's an interesting idea. So you pick up a knight and you want knight at g6. Ah, how to defend knight at g6. Knight at g6, you can still play it. Though. That's, that's the annoying thing about this move. Takes, takes. Now you're threatening queen takes h7. Now you have rook on the back. Rook on the back rank! Rook on the back rank was even stronger. Because if knight takes, queen takes h7. But queen takes is, was another idea. But still. So he defends his back rank. And now chicken is under time pressure. Which doesn't happen as often. In the meantime, does the finisher have something? Notice how the finishers reinforces. He's got he's getting, trying to get in on the back rank. Notice takes takes block. Yeah, there's nothing. I think the finisher's doing quite nicely. Just how to finish it off. Ooh, pawn. He wants pawn takes pawn. Ooh, that's nasty. He doesn't have a pawn for g7 though. This is, the important thing here is to stop the promotion. Queen takes rook, king takes, knight here takes, bishop, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice mate found by chicken. So it felt like the finisher was doing quite nicely, but it was really hard to defend. Um, and chicken found the mate. So two and a half minutes on the clock, probably the last game coming up. Um, that was quite a good one. So if you look at the scores, Chicken's hit 104 and has paused. Um, the finisher is playing against Matza. And uh, Platypus is playing against Tactic Bot. We didn't see so much of him. Legion Destroyer is playing against Freebie. Um, Retarded Platypus against Tactic Bot. Seeing an, an attack. On the queen. Bishop c3 again, and he's probably going to sack on. Ooh. That was a big miss. He missed that his knight was hanging. Um, so let's watch the finisher against Matza. Um, and then I'll, if I have a chance. Oh, that's a nice. A nice discovery that bishop e6 doesn't work because of this. Um, yeah. Can I just, I'm going to quickly open up the platypus against this. This was in looking interesting. So it looked like platypus was doing very well, but nice, nice move found here. Bishop here pinning it and then hitting the knight. And now it's not so clear. And suddenly Platypus is the one on the run and getting mated, potentially. Is he going to get mated? 
Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Queen takes pawn. Oh, he's going to... Is there a counter mate from Platypus here? No, he's just allowed bishop g7 checkmate. Queen here checkmate. Oh, queen here checkmate. Oh my goodness. What? Rook here checkmate. Okay, so the tactic bot takes down retired Platypus um, in that rather interesting game. Um, going back to uh, the finisher against Matt, so we left it off here. And it's a castle's queen side. It's going for tactics here. And he's debating should I go for it or not. I think he will. Why wouldn't he? Oh. The knight is nasty. Queen takes knight, maybe. Knight takes rook, queen takes. If pawn here just sidestep. So he's safe. And that's the flags. Um, what else is happening? Uh, that's it. That's the arena over. Chicken Crossroad was an 82% win rate. Very convincing win rate. Um, the finisher in second with a 67% win rate. And Bugzilla in third with 66%. So Chicken was definitely the man to beat today. And PKNM, whom we saw with lots of very um, sort of nice win against Chicken in the London system, he came in fourth, and GSVC in fifth. Uh, although GSVC was playing quite a lot of rovers and interesting openings. Um, Legion Destroyer, good performance to, to come sixth. Um, Matzo came seventh. Freebie uh, didn't play the whole tournament and came eighth. And Retired Platypus also didn't play the whole tournament and came ninth. So those are the top nine. Um, a few other people who did play the whole tournament, Banana Joe and Czech Rays and Duvid played quite a lot. Um, but it's basically about 10 players. So the $100 goes to Chicken Crossroads. Um, so congratulations to him. 27.57 performance. Strong performance. 104 points in the tournament. Let's see some of the, the chat. Um, Duvis says he has to get ready for the Detroit City Chess Club. Um, good games. Um, so chicken gets a hundred dollars from um, from the hundred dollar prize from uh, JK the bullfrog who is sponsoring this tournament. Um, cool. And uh, just to finish, well, we have to finish with this game uh, with 11, 11 lost force checkmate sequences. That's quite a lot. Um, it's only a 55 move game. Um, Bugzilla is white. The finisher is black. Let's look at it from the finisher's perspective. Because the finisher does end up winning the, this game. Um, so this line, knight g5 and d5, seems to be happening quite a lot lately. Um, and the finisher doesn't play knight d4, which is the engine's first impulse in this position. And if I look at the opening explorer, knight takes d5 is the most popular move. Um, but goes for knight a5. Knight takes f7, king takes e6, king e8, g6, bishop d6. And I, I imagine this is all theory of some kind. Castles, knight takes e4, b takes e4. Um, and bishop at e4. So what's the attempt here? I think the attempt is to take with the knight, 
here, and then we're gonna we're gonna have total control on the light squares. Try to get back control on the light squares. Okay, and this is the first mistake. This is the first huge howler, um, apparently, is that uh, Bugzilla plays knight at f7. And why is that a howler? Because apparently bishop takes g2 is strong. If you go taking the queen, then at f3, the point being that if queen here, king takes knight, there's no checkmate. Um, and at f3 is strong because it threatens both knight at h3 and knight at e2. Um, so it's fairly hard to defend. So queen at g3 would would defend this, for example. Um, I think then knight d2 would, would be it. So knight d2 doesn't work here because um, just queen takes, takes, and queen takes bishop, and white is now a lot safer, or not fairly safe anyway. Um, so the move here would actually be e4 hitting that queen. Um, interesting. Uh, what else could white do here? White could also try and throw in a check with a pawn, like a pawn here, for example. But you just take the knight. Now you have you you have even more threats. So bishop takes g2 is dangerous. And if black, instead of taking the queen, takes back on uh, g2, you have apparently bishop takes e6. And again, why can't the knight just take the queen? We only have two pawns and a knight. But that apparently is enough to cause a lot of trouble, because if knight f4, king g1, king takes d8, we're suddenly threatening a mate with the second knight and a pawn on g2. So my first reaction is just why not just put a pawn on g2? No problem. Pawn at e2. So it may be we are queen down, but the bishops actually cover everything, and uh, white has nothing. Uh, and actually it's black who's winning this game. The, the more it thinks, the more it just says this is completely lost for white. So it turns out knight, knight, takes, knight f7 is a howler because it allows bishop takes g2. Okay, uh, but that was missed. Knight f4 was played, just putting in more pressure on g2. Um, d3, and now bishop takes g2. So why isn't this strong? Because we still have the threat of at f3 and then moving the knight to either of these two squares. Um, but apparently bishop takes e6 was strong, and again I'm just wondering why not just take the queen. Um, and apparently at e2 is... Yeah, so apparently this might be slightly stronger for... Yeah, it's not clear. Um, so knight here, here, bishop takes g2 is played, that seems actually very reasonable. Bishop takes knight, and uh, yeah, white regains control, basically, of the position. Uh, the, the queen next to the king is always a really, really great defender. Um, f3 is not covered, so for example, if black could play two moves in a row, go for a bishop at f3 and a rook at h1. But bishop at f3 can be met by a pawn at g2, and so white is actually very safe here. So, black took back the bishop, lost the queen, goes for a check, blocks, bishop here. So black's attack is very slow at this point. Knight at f7. So just to check that people can see the analysis on the board. Yes, the analysis is visible. Good. You can't see the swings, but I can't fit everything on the board. You can get an idea from the tip of the swings what's going on. Um, and also from the bar, you can see from the bar, so white is winning, because it's all white. At e2, queen e1, and suddenly the suddenly it swings and black is winning <laughs> after queen e1. So why is queen e1 such a mistake? So apparently, queen takes, bishop takes queen, and white would have checkmate, with knight takes d6 check, if king takes knight, there's bishop at e7 check, king takes, knight f5 check, so we're threatening queen at e7 um, checkmate, so we, we better take that knight. Um, but the reason why we did that was just to get the knight out of the way so we can put a bishop down, 
Um, and so why can't we just block? So this queen at f7, king here, pawn at e7. And that was the point of putting the bishop down, it's just to stop the king from running up. Bishop takes and queen takes. So not, not the simplest mate, um, this bishop at e7 idea, but there are other mates as well apparently. Um, and of course if knight takes bishop, pawn takes, then queen, queen f7, king takes, and pawn to c7 is also checkmate. don't know if I should show that. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, so, so the move for white here was just queen takes pawn. This gives suddenly um, black an edge. I'll just take away the opening explorer. So why so? Why has black got an edge now? Because if rook takes g2, just with a pawn we can have an edge. Okay, rook takes g2. Because if king h1... Then, okay, so what happens if king h1? Because we're spot for choice. We could take here and, and go some sort of ideas here, but apparently this is strongest. Um, bishop takes knight. The point is if, if pawn takes, we're just taking this knight and, and we're very safe. The, the two squares are defended. Um, and if take back with the knight, where's the mate? We, we only have a knight and pawns in hand, but this is enough to mate. If king here, knight here is mate straight away, so you better take it. Knight f3, you can never come here, otherwise knight takes queen is going to be mating. Pawn at g4, ah, you're forced to lose, you're forced to to lose the queen with check, and this is the point. And similarly, if you go here, if you go to h1 directly, it's even easier. h1, at g2, takes, knight takes queen, you run this way, and the same, the same pattern. At g4, king h4, knight to f3. Notice how the two knights three apart cover a whole little square of squares. A little knight cube, I like to say. It's one face of a knight cube. That's another face, and so on. Um, okay, so rook takes g2 is actually very powerful, followed by bishop takes knight. Um, so if king h1, bishop takes knight, apparently the best move is something like bishop at f3, and rook takes h2 anyway. King takes h2 and then work away on the, on the dark squares. And black has an edge. Um, and why not just take that rook? That's the other question. So the point is, if you take the rook, you have f3 check. And if king g1, we then take the knight. And the threat is knight here check, pawn here checkmate. And if you step up, then again there's bishop takes knight. And again, what's the mate? Bishop takes pawn check, pawn here, forcing the king up. Knight g2, forcing the king up, bishop here, pawn here. And that's also checkmate. So the king is being forced up into a mating net. Okay, so rook takes g2 was very strong, but we saw, we'll see that this happen later. Bishop takes knight first. And why, why does the move order matter? Because now knight takes bishop threatens mate in one. So after rook takes g2, you can't actually go king h1 because you get mated by rook takes h2, but you can apparently go king takes rook f3 king takes f3, knight at d4, king e3, and you're getting away, <laughs> amazingly. Um, which you weren't in the original line, so why not? So if in this line, if rook takes g2, king takes, and then bishop takes knight, knight takes, threatening the mate, and then um, f3, king takes f3, Bishop takes e6, covering the checkmate. Pawn takes bishop. Hang on, there's something something I went wrong here. Um, so rook takes g2, king takes g2. 
So black is supposed to be winning here. Why is black winning? Ah, yes. Because the, the pawn is defended by the bishop. You go pawn f3 first before you take the knight. That was the whole point. Um, so yes. So very subtle point. By doing this, you're, you're stopping the bishop supporting at f3. Uh, so by doing it in this order. And now this was a blunder from chicken because knight takes supports a check is a mate in one threat. Pawn takes, king takes knight, and suddenly black is safe. And black is even winning. Rook takes g2, and we see the line now. f3 check takes. So black is completely winning. The finisher completely winning against Bugzilla. King h1, knight takes queen. The threat now is at g2, which Bugzilla defends with with first a counterattack, and then Ooh, just th he threw in another. So now he had bishop here, takes knight straight away. But he went for a pawn check first, takes another check. King here, queen here, check. So black, note, is completely winning in this position. Uh, a bishop is not enough to mate for white. Um, and recognizing that... Um, white white just uh, Blackzilla just took the knight to try and uh, stay safe but black is in control black is in control how is black in control so black has a mate in six so that was missed because uh, black played rook at e1 and, and that that's this is still good still mating uh, but the mate in six is queen f1 you block with the bishop and then at g2. And now you're forcing the trade of queens, and now it's quite clear why uh, black is winning. It's going knight to f4, you're covering the escape this way. Um, so if he, if he comes down this way, you have queen here checkmate. So you're forcing the king up, king f3, queen e2, king here, and queen here checkmate. So very easy mate. Okay, instead um, the finisher played this, which is also mating. But it's important to take, take, and use the fact this queen is overloaded. Even though he's only got one knight, that's going to be enough. Knight takes e2, queen takes knight, bishop takes pawn, king takes, so quite a subtle one, rook at h3, king takes h3, and queen h1. So he can block, but you go bishop at g2, king here, and finally a pawn check to mate. So it was quite subtle because he didn't have two knights. So he needed to use the fact bishop takes h2 and, and, and magnet mate the king by drawing the king up to h3 and putting a queen on h1. So he made life difficult for himself by not immediately going for queen f1, queen takes g2. But this... Now, by going knight g5, suddenly white has mate with a knight and a bishop. With knight and a bishop. Um, bishop d2 was played, sort of going for safety, taking the rook. Um, but uh, that wasn't. Um, that's also strong, actually. But much stronger, even still, was knight f7. So you're you're, you're guarding the h6 square in particular. H4, king h5, queen f5. So you're threatening to to, to come here. King h4, queen g5, king h3, and bishop at g2, checkmate. So if you're going to allow the queen invasion, you're, you're going to be done for. So you go here, but then bishop at g3. Again, if, if king h5, queen here, and takes is checkmate. So what do you do? Takes, takes, come up, and uh, bishop here, or queen g2, even checkmate. Um... So knight f7 was the beautiful way of mating. So this is also strong, but he, he and white now is winning again. I mean, he, white is very safe. The black king is in the middle of the board. Okay, so white has force mate. Queen takes pawn. There are there are more efficient ways of mating, like queen f5, um, uh, rook h4 to draw him up, and then um, knight f3 check, and then queen takes would be the most efficient. So knight f3, pawn takes, rook at h4, draws the king up, and then a knight check to finish.
here and queen takes pawn. So that's the beautiful way of mating for Bugzilla. But instead, what did we see? Instead we saw queen takes hc, this, knight here check, takes, takes, white still in control, queen here, look here, so black's desperately trying to defend, takes, um, takes a knight, so white is in complete control obviously still, knight here check, uh, so now this knight is hanging, goes knight, knight back, rook takes f2, so white's got force mate, bishop takes, oh, so white does have force mate, um, just with simple moves. Um, How does white mate in this position? Okay, just simply queen takes knight. Um, and the threat is knight at f7 is checkmate. Um, like if, if black does nothing, knight at f7, oh, is not checkmate. No, so it's not checkmate because the rook defends, sorry. Um, so if, if black just defends, the threat is just g takes. I mean, you're, you're just basically just, you're just coming in and... and uh, there's, there, there is no defense, there are just too many pieces. Um, but the move that white played, curiously, is almost like the one losing move. Bishop takes here. Because by taking this piece, you suddenly lose control of the f2 square and you're losing the queen with check. So the moment you take this, knight takes, and suddenly black is mating. Knight takes, you're taking the queen with check. Knight takes queen, pawn takes, uh, get your queen on the back rank with check. Uh, you might just go knight here just to stop queen takes g3. You actually have a second queen, and it's just all over. Um, even if you didn't have a second queen, this would be surely mating with pawn h2, king takes, queen here, check, um, rook g2, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn. I'm just trying to see how would you mate without the queen. Bishop at g1, king here. Yes, yeah, so it's not so easy to make without the queen. There might be a way of doing it, but I'm not seeing it. Um, so let's just see if there's a way of mating without the queen. If I just go queen here, pawn here, is there a way of mating? There's still a way of mating, yes. Knight at f1, bishop at e3, okay. King h2. Because the point is, if you just go king g2, you're, you're, you're getting mated very easily with this maneuver. So you have to go king to h2, pawn takes, if knight takes, queen g1 checkmate, that's very pretty. So it's a clearance idea. So if uh, king here, well then just queen here, and then, yeah. So a very beautiful clearance idea. That's really good one to remember, actually. Um, so you, you check from a distance, threatening an invasion, and uh, if this, 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 that's a very beautiful mate. That's, that's one to really want to know. Um, but what happened in the game is uh, the finishers tried to be clever and, and uh, what was he trying to do even? I mean, queen here was also a mating. Queen e1, queen e1 check. The point being, if this, you have checkmate. And if, uh, if, if white blocks, you still win the queen with check. But now you have queen takes pawn check. Uh, anyway, it's if you block the knight, it's the same kind of ideas. Knight f1, knight takes queen, pawn takes. Uh, we, we use our second queen and so on. Okay, but instead, what a crazy move. Queen h1, it can just be taken. Um, white's completely winning. Um, instead, king takes king takes knight, and now suddenly black has the mate on again. Bishop at d4, nice move, nice move, bishop at d4. Um, it is the, maybe it's, is it the one mating move? Bishop at d4, blocks. Um, knight at e3 makes the mate a bit more certain, because you can go bishop takes knight, um, king takes bishop, uh, queen e1 check. Anyway, we can believe that there is a mate somewhere here. But instead, black took the queen, and... 
this is the position that's really crazy because now knight f7, king h5, knight hit, oh no, knight hit is not checkmate. But just simply rook h6 is checkmate, yes. Rook h6 is checkmate because the knight covers the, the escape square of the king. So that's, that's the one I saw in the game. Oof. But knight here check, knight here was played, and bishop can just take this knight. Uh, g4 check, and so, suddenly um, suddenly black is mating again. Queen takes g4. Um, if knight takes queen, okay, black's just got too much material. Bishop here, uh, king here, um, queen is co coming in on... Queen here, check. King here. Uh, maybe knight here, check. That, that will do it. Knight c1, check. King here, and pawn here to finish. So why did I instinctively put the knight there? It's just the, the knight and the queen diagonally three apart are really powerful, but knight controls those two, queen controls diagonal. But there were other mating moves as well. And knight at g1 was also good. Uh, and again, the same, king here and pawn at e2. So notice putting the knight and queen on the same color, uh, they work together well. Um, so, so queen takes pawn was found. Rook at h6 now doesn't work anymore. Rook at h6 was mate, but after bishop takes, bishop's now guarding h6. So white finds the move rook h6 too late. Um, So, so black's completely winning here. Bishop at g3, rook here. So as we said, um, queen at e1 is a lot stronger. Queen e1, king f3, knight g1 is checkmate. So this is effectively a back rank, and the bishop's cutting off. Um, but with a rook, the king can slide away this way, which it couldn't have done if it were a queen. Okay, so nice move, putting a queen in the way. And now queen b2, and now any check will win. And that's when black finally found found the mate, and that was the mate the finisher found. But there were 11 instances during that game when when players lost the false checkmate sequence, um, which is something something near to a record for 2600s for sure. Lost, 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 lost. Um, was there... Checkmate is now unavoidable. Um, okay, so some of these might not be valid. Are they all valid? Yes, no, they are all valid. So you get you you have these moves which were not only did they lose the forced checkmate sequence, but they hung checkmate back. So you get the double checkmate is now unavoidable, and you lost the forced checkmate sequence. By the way, <laughs> so quite a game, quite a game. Um, um, but great. Great practice for mating, definitely, this game. Uh, Sleipnir says, you can trade off the knight, maybe, um, and Kez, 1337, I'm ready to see some Crazy House. Well, we've seen uh, two and a half hours of Crazy House, so it's been good stuff, hopefully. Uh, maybe I, I, I dwelt too long on this final game, almost half an hour on it. But just to finish, congratulations to, well, congratulations to Finisher for finally finishing off that game, and on coming second, and congratulations for Chicken, uh, Bugzilla ends up third, and congratulations to Chicken for running away with this one. Um, who managed to beat Chicken? PKNM, special kudos to him. The finisher, Bugzilla, twice. The finisher a second time. GSVC once, the finisher a third time. So some kudos to the finisher for getting, uh, for, for, for getting Chicken three times, but Chicken overall won 6-3 against the finisher in that in this arena so well deserved winner of the elite arena uh, on the 6th of march 2020 so hope you've enjoyed the stream um, uh, this is okay signing out do check out my youtube to see my uh, other crazy house commentary streams and do check out the playlists on the youtube where i collect um, i collect videos not only my own um, of different genres, so Bug House, Crazy House, other chess variants, Crazy House 960, instructional Crazy House videos, and so on and so on. Um, 
Okay, that's that's all for today, and thanks for watching.